Hey everybody, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video at the Cullen uh, Coin Club show. Uh, found some pretty cool coins today, but uh, yeah, let's get this video started. Enjoy the show. Picked up a few coins this morning. Nice 1822 uh, cap quarter. A few kind of uh, barber stuff. Nice little V nickel. Merc. And uh, yeah, a few, a few OGHs. Pretty good start to the morning. Thanks, Trent. Drove up here last night, we drove about what, four hours. It's right outside of Dallas, it's in the city of Allen. Uh, this coin club is pretty good. It's got a few kind of dealers that we know and a few that we don't know. Uh, we spent about, you know, I think we spent about four or 5,000 in there. Uh, just finding a few nice key, key day coins. A little bit more with eye appeal as well. Uh, the tough part about small coin shows is that they're not really set up for like early bird and entry fees and all that stuff. Um, and so when we were actually coming here this morning, we showed up at seven, which was one dealers kind of set up. And then uh, they wouldn't let us in until nine. So uh, it's a little bit frustrating sometimes when you get here at seven and you want to kind of get in and, and uh, find out, you know, what they have to offer and then they just won't let you in. So that's a little bit tough, especially with these shows. So I think they should offer something that's you know, just allows the, the dealer that doesn't want to buy a table to get in. Uh, they have a kind of like coin club rules and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, but we found some great coins, met some great dealers. It's really hard to film in there just because there's like 120 people. But yeah, we're gonna take some of these coins home, show you guys some stuff, give you guys a little bit of backstory on one of them. We actually, you know, we actually bought a coin that, uh, it was the first ever coin this guy ever submitted to PCGS like 1987 so cool kind of history cool kind of pedigree well uh, but uh yeah let's uh catch up at home and uh, show you guys some coins all righty guys just got home from the show it was awesome uh very fortunate to be able to just go do it you love every single week you can't beat that but let's start off with the bottom row here with a few nice coins this is a 1935 mercury dime graded ms65 full bands by pcgs uh, a lot of these Mercury Dimes, when you're trying to look look at them, you're trying to see if they would have a shot at getting a gold cack. That's mainly where a lot of the money is in these coins. But honestly, I don't think this one has the best shot at a, at a gold cack. And so that's why we have it priced what we have it priced. But it's a little bit be of a better date in a Rattler holder. And so I had to pick that one up from Trent. I really appreciate the deal on that one, homie. When we were at the show and they wouldn't let us in, uh, I looked into the show and I saw all three of these coins lined up with CAC stickers on them. And I'm like, I'm going to go there first. And so uh, I, when I picked them up, I was like, man, these coins are just phenomenal. And, you know, the CAC sticker is a good thing, but also just look at the luster on the coins. Look at the surfaces of the coins. I mean, all of these are very nice, very beautiful coins. And uh, you can't go wrong with lovely pieces like this. Very fortunate enough to pick these up. And uh, like walkers like this though, they don't have any problem selling just because they have that eye appeal. They have something that will draw your customer in and make them very happy when they get it in hand. And so if the coin makes you go wow, then that's very important as a coin dealer because that's ultimately what you want when you are selling coins to a collector. If you buy an ugly coin and they receive it in hand and it's just something that they really won't want to keep for a long time and you're the one that sold it to them, Sometimes they would leave dissatisfied and they might not come back and work with you again. So finding better coins like this is something that 
we try to pride ourselves on weekly to find and uh, put on the website for you guys. And comment down below, do you guys want the light box or do you guys prefer the kitchen light just to kind of show you guys these coins? Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think because we're tossing it up in the air on what we should do if it's the front of the, you know, in the, in the light box or is it in the kitchen. But, man, these are some nice walkers. Very happy with these. If I had a walker set, I'd be putting those in the walker set, but I don't. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts about the local show near you. Is it worth going, kind of attending? Is it worth, uh, you know, is it worth your time? Just let us know. And uh, subscribe if you're new. We got uh, interesting coin videos every single week talking about just the things we pick up and the experiences we have at uh, these shows. But uh, yeah, let's get back to today's video. Uh, up next are these really two nice original coins. The first one is this 1934 Texas, graded fine 15 by uh, PCGS. Not a lot of these are in low ball condition. And so I thought I'd give this one a send a CAC. Maybe they graded a little bit harshly back then. And uh, hoping for a gold CAC, something like that. I was offered a fair bit of money for it already, but it's just something that I want to see for myself. And I just love the detail on this coin. It had, you know, I had a road where it was a little bit bumpy, but the overall originality of this coin is very nice, which makes me want to pick it up. If there was one that was in a newer slab and looked a little bit more cleany, then I really wouldn't want that. And for all the people that don't know what cleany means, it's just there's coins out there that have been dipped or they've had really old cleaning, and sometimes it just takes away from their eye appeal and their originality of a coin. But this one, super original. This one's one of my favorite coins of the weekend. It's the 1822 cap bus quarter this one's graded vf 35 it's the browning browning one variety still need to look into what that really means but when i looked at the population there was only like 15 in browning one and this one was super original and trent ended up buying this coin at waco when we couldn't go and he ended up bringing it to me and so very happy that trent and i could work out a deal and i might see what cat says on this one also i think it has a really good shot and uh, this one was actually submitted raw by a guy named Bill Bailey. He lives in the Texas area. It's still in his registry set, so I might have to talk to him about getting it out of there, but I love those coins a lot. Probably my two favorite of the weekend. Let's scroll on back down to uh, the second row. It's a 1902 uh, V-Nickel, and the reason why I like this one so much because the surface is on the obverse and the luster is really strong. That really drew me to the coin. And a lot of these coins that we picked up were, was from a guy that hasn't been out of his house in like two years, and so sometimes that's the best way to get new inventory because it's really fresh and you don't see it every show. The Colin the uh, Coin Club show is pretty decent for sure though, but a little bit of haziness on the reverse, a little bit of a, of a hit right next, under the V on the left side, but still, pretty phenomenal piece. Don't really buy too many 1902, uh, 1902 V nickels, but that one jumped out at me. We had a few guys selling stuff at the show and I was out in the lobby and someone offered to sell me some stuff and I bought a few kind of knickknacks. Here's one of them, this is a 1945S Mercury Dime. Just a nice blast white coin, a little bit of toning on the edge of the obverse, but got that coin from somebody. Also got this one too. Just accommodate stuff. This one's a nice OGH though, has a little bit of a toning spot in the hair, but you know, nice little starter coins for someone that's wanting to do Morgans and Mercury Dimes. Always need that stuff at your shop, just gets people intrigued. Uh, here's a pretty cool uh, American Silver Eagle. So the story on these really is that these these holders were not really meant to keep coins from toning. It's just that they really weren't sealed to the best that they could. And uh, over time, this American Silver Eagle toned in this kind of pattern. And you're going to see a lot of these at shows or maybe on eBay. It's just that they started to tone in the holder. Even some of them say blast white 100% on them. And so... When you find coins like this, a lot of these are actually go for some decent money. Some go anywhere between 150 to a few thousand dollars just to based on their toning. Some of them can get pretty wicked for sure. I've uh, been jumping into gold a little bit as well. This is 1849O. Uh, this is a, I think this is a Type 1 uh, gold dollar. I like this one just because it's a small little coin and it's a nice little piece of numismatic history. I thought it was just interesting. I like the design of it. I wanted to get a gold dollar a few week, a few days ago in a rattler holder, but it went for too much money. But I got this coin at Gray Sheet, and I thought I would offer it on here. 
to you guys. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just starting to get into the series. It just really depends on what I like and what jumps out to me. And that one really did jump out to me. Uh, we were kind of roaming around the show right, before, right after I picked up this Texas. And I picked up a coin from somebody that was walking the floor. This one's a 1962 Franklin half dollar. It's got a little bit of rainbow toning on the obverse. Luster's still pretty nice. It's a little choppy in the fields just because it's you know it's a 64 grade. A lot of coins were hitting up against this one, but we sold out all of our Franklins surprisingly. So I wanted to get something that was just jumped out in eye appeal, had a little bit of difference to it. Here's a little bit of a better date Boone. It's a 1938 Boone. We have MS65 by NGC. Really nice, strong luster on the coin, spot free, and it's blast white. I do like the eye appeal of the coin, and so that's why I picked it up. Another coin that was offered to us at Gray Sheet, so I couldn't go wrong with that. Very thankful for the opportunity to run into coins sometimes at Gray Sheet, but that's not always what happens. Here's a nice 2.1 gen holder. If you guys don't know what that is, basically there's a rattler inside of here. And then there's two parts that kind of hold the, label, the, the, um, the holder together, and they're pressed together really well. And, uh, you know, I like the kind of the generation holder, and I also like this coin. We ended up buying, I think, over 100 coins, 125 coins a little bit back and um, at the TNA show last year. This is one of the last coins that were left just because it was priced way too high back then. But the market, you know, market came up, and he came down a little bit, and so this dimple... Came in just the right time, and uh, I do like the coin, do like the holder. Nice little piece of PCGS history there. Here's a nice old green holder. This is an 1880S Morgan Dollar, great MS64 dimple. Really nice, deep feels, just how 81S and 80S are going to be kind of coming for you guys if you, if you end up buying one. And when you get into 64, 65, you're not going to find the haze that you see on 62s and 63s. That one was a little hazy, this one here. But this one was, you know, really nice, kind of deep mirrors. Just a nice, beautiful coin. And so, very happy with that one also. Here's a kind of a bigger purchase that we did at the show. Um, we bought a little bit of a harder kind of variety. This is a 1900 O over CC. It's a top 100 VAM. It's got an MS63. It's got a little spot there underneath the P, but... You know, nice problem-free surfaces, nice luster still on the coin. And if you guys zoom into the mint mark here, you can really see that that C. So there's a C kind of um, hanging off the back of the O, and there's a little bit of a C starting right to the right of the O. Really tough to see, but about 10% of these were struck um, with the O over CC kind of variety. And I think it was just because they, they repurposed uh, the Carson City dies at the New Orleans mint. And so what they did was they basically etched the O in there and the CC was still kind of peeking out. And so when they were actually striking these coins, about, like I said, 10% of them have the CC kind of popping out from the background while the O is the, the, kind, of the, kind of the thing that's sticking out. So we have this 1922 piece dollar, just a nice little common coin, an OGH holder, something to get people started in piece dollars. You know, we want to buy stuff that's a little bit more rare, a little bit tougher to find. But also things that really get people started and get people intrigued. And so really like that coin. Here's a nice little rattler V-nickel. This one's an MS64 1904 V-nickel. I like this one. It's got a few kind of spots on it, but I don't see too many of these in, in, in rattler holders. And so if someone's kind of trying to make a set and you and you know who wants to make a set, you can probably get these coins and pay a little bit more for them. I have a few guys that ask me about V-Nickels and Rattlers, and so, you know, maybe one of these guys want this in their set. I think it's just a cool little piece, and Rattler holders are really becoming pretty hard to buy, especially for a reasonable price, and so you're going to have to pay up for those. But here's a 1904 uh, Barber Quarter. This one has a little bit of a cleany look to it, but it's going to be price adjusted that way. You know, it's probably some old cleaning, kind of a dip to the coin. They try to bring out and make it a little bit of a higher grade. And so, you know, just a decent little piece for the barber set. Got a nice commemorative here. This is an Iowa commemorative from 1946. This one's going to be an MS65, an old green holder. Nice little eagle on the front. And uh, I don't know, I like the design overall. They were made, well, they made a lot of these, but I don't know, I still like the, the beauty of the coin, the originality of this one. Not too bad at all. 
a lot of people have been asking us about three cent silvers and so we we saw three or four at the show but all of them kind of look cleaned except for this one and so we ended up buying it this is 1851 three cent silver grade AU58 it's got kind of some pink or purples right on that kind of shield there it's pretty interesting but there's nothing that's really happened to the coin over a period of time it just sat somewhere and so I like the coin because it just wasn't over dipped or old cleaning and so finding coins with a nice originality even if they have a few spots on them can you know can be a little bit more nice I think a lot of the three cent silvers were just messed with way too much they were like uh, you know like my theory is that they probably dropped them in, in dip or something MS 70 and they couldn't get them out that's just my theory but here's a nice 1909 D uh, $5 Indian I don't buy too many of these, but like I said, I get I get some of these offered to me at Gray Sheet. This one was pretty close to Gray Sheet, and I couldn't be more thankful uh, for Ted. Ted hooked me up with this one. I like this coin uh, just because it has that kind of rich, rich kind of gold to it look. A little bit flashy of a reverse here, and uh, yeah, like I said, we're getting into the gold scene. It's going to be a little bit slower, just because it's so expensive sometimes to buy gold, especially right now with everything that's going on in the world. This is an 1856 half cent. The reason why I like this coin so much is because it has like a really nice chocolate look to it. It's not black or really kind of vibrant if someone messed with it. It's just nice, original, uh, barely circulated half cent. I like the coin um, very much and uh, I was very happy that the dealer would let us buy it for what we bought it for. Uh, just stuff like that right now is pretty tough to find like I said. and So the opportunity like that is really awesome. And last but not least, nice 1937 Denver three-legged buffalo. Got a few kind of spots on it or streaking. Flip over the coin, and you got that little three-legged right there. Very happy with this coin. Um, don't buy too many three-legged buffaloes, but when one comes up for the right price, and the guy said it was his first ever one that he submitted, that really drew me to the coin and made me very excited to buy it. And so that's why we did so. But Thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's cut it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Uh, we try our best to give you guys just what we see and what kind of coins we're picking up. So any of your support would mean a lot. Uh, yeah, comment your thoughts down below. Like I said, what, what do you guys like to pick up? What do you guys think about your local shows? And subscribe if you're new. But uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.